This is a presentation of RBT Entertainment. This isn't about the dead, it's about the living. It's about my mother. It's about my sister. It's about my wife. It's about the 14 years it took me to go from undesirable to un-goddamn deniable. You know, they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Small Joe, and you can see that statement is not true. Because I'm better than you, and you know it. In the back, there are men and women Seasoned professionals, dues paid in full, gunning to be the best. I'll always light the way, and all you have to do is let me in. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Hey, hi, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the WrestleCast, presented by RBT Entertainment on Potomac.com, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you may find this fine idea of recording and live on RBT Entertainment's official Twitch.tv channel. We talk about professional wrestling, both in the mainstream and the independent scene. My name's Matt J. That is TWK. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm TWK, I'm TWK Reviews here to entertain you once again, and what a week of wrestling we've been having! This has been one of those weeks, but we will discuss it in just a few moments. Before I, I do anything else, we got to introduce our third man in the third chair, the one and only Shin Tiger Curl. Hello. Hey, Minoru Suzuki, everybody. Good, I, week, I, I, I am not, not Minoru Suzuki. Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki-san, one week without you. One week, Suzuki-san. I am not Minoru Suzuki. I am uh, uh, Tommy from Power Rangers. Oh, bullshit you are. Bullshit. Yes, I, am. I have long <laughs> hair. I do roundhouse kick. Zikia eats morphine time. See? Tommy. But you're not nearly as much of a jackass. Or as much of I, a douche. Aha! I fooled you all. You thought it was your friend Tommy from Power Rangers, but in reality, it was me. Rip. Uh, hi, I'm Mark. Uh, what? You guys don't know me. I'm actually the pyro guy who was in charge of AW Revolution. I'm oh, it's, it's you're the guy I'm always pissed off at. Get him! Get him! Raw yeah. pitchforks! I've, I've been hiding out here for the last week or so because. I'm a fucking scared of Tony Khan. Shen, come in here, <laughs> take this guy away so he could actually face the wrath of Tony Khan. No, no, you guys don't understand. Tony Khan is a scary motherfucker. He is, he is jacked beyond belief. He is more swole than Ryan Cage. I'm not kidding. That that guy snorts protein powder 24 seven. He he said he's gonna beat my ass. He's gonna beat my ass until it looks like hamburger. I'm scared of him. Well, you shouldn't have fucked up the pyro during the exploding time bomb thing. I know. I'm sorry for that. Oh, shit. He's outside. I, guys, I got to go. I don't want to die. Hey, Mr. Khan. The jackass is over there. Yeah, <laughs> why, why is Tony Khan outside my house, and why does he look swoller than Chris Masters? Uh, because the the the, guy, the technician that fucked up the time bomb there during that explosion, uh, exploding barbed wire thing. Yeah, yeah, oh, he was he, okay. he snuck in with a Minoru oh, okay. Suzuki mask for some reason. Okay, uh, Tony, punch him in the dick for me, for, for for me, and for everybody else. Yeah, yeah, punch punch him in the dick for the Russell cast. That 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 would be that be much appreciated. Although they they have recovered, but we will discuss we will discuss that. Uh, in case you're wondering why the logo is still on the screen and not the information that uh, you're uh, oh so used to, um, will our mystery guest come in and sign in, please? Okay, what in the ever-loving hell is going on in here? <laughs> I know, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I from, leave uh, you motherfuckers alone for five seconds, and all of a sudden you've got a pyro guy hiding out here trying to run for the cops, or in this case, Tony Cobb. What the fuck, people? <laughs> Hello, everyone! <laughs> I'm The Shades, and this <laughs> is a wrestling takeover. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time since 
Oh, Jesus. When is the last time he came here? <laughs> it's been too fucking long. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> it's been a few years. It's been a few years. And they just get you a little up to fear. This is basically our normal Fridays now. Yeah, this is. Every time we introduce Shin Tiger Girl, someone else dressed up as Minoru Suzuki tries to say they're not Minoru Suzuki. And it's getting old, but we like it. It's funny. Note to self, update the RVT security. Uh, don't yes. worry. Uh, it, it's 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 it, they're gonna breach through it. They they always find a way. Keep keep. keep trust me, I though. know from experience. <laughs> <laughs> so we should probably explain what the heck is going on. Obviously, uh, Tokyo Rifts was off last weekend. We are back next weekend, obviously, or that this Sunday, as a matter of fact. Uh, Indeed. But, uh, this was because I had to do my actual job as part of the WrestleCast, is you know, and, and watch a pop of you, which we will we shall discuss in a couple of minutes. I uh, got the paper you Sunday, got my bev and all, all that stuff, and I was feeling kind of lonely, as as one will do if if you've been in a pandemic for one whole last year. And I. I threw up the. I, I bought the pay per view, and of course, Discord has this thing where you can actually, you, you know, uh, share your screen and stream the screen. And I figured, hey, I bought the pay per view, I'll share. Why not? And uh, a few of the crew uh, accept kindly accepted the offer, including this guy in the red shirt over there. Yeah, I I have for those who have not followed me, like I used to be. Uh, I wouldn't say a semi regular guest on the Razzle Cast. Until wrestling, at least WWE, got so unbelievably unbearable that I just couldn't take 30, it anymore. The Undertaker match—that's what broke that. Me. That's the that was the start. But yeah, a couple years after that, I finally had thrown my arms up and was like, "Done, I'm done." I'd occasionally pop in for a Royal Rumble or WrestleMania pay per view, but otherwise, I just stopped watching altogether. And then even that wasn't enough because even the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania started to turn to shit. So and to be fair, and to be fair, Tita and I have kept the shades abreast of uh, of wrestling goings on, and we told them that, even when I didn't want it. Yours, yours, yeah, but you, we, we kept reminding him of why he was safe not going back to professional wrestling for a while. But, but, however, yeah, they they also kept me informed of how AEW was doing, and I had heard a lot of good things from it and from them and from a lot of other. I still follow a lot of the wrestling YouTubers. I follow Brian Zane. I follow and I'm on on Wrestle Talk. You know, I follow a lot of these guys. So I kicked up a little bit with what was going on. And so when I heard that, once I saw Maddie was going to share the pay per view, I was like, you know what? What the fuck? I got nothing else to do on a Sunday night. Let's check this shit out. You will learn my thoughts very soon. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that that's pretty much where he's always joining us for the review, and that's what we're doing in our first segment, as per usual. We may do a Q and A, but it, considering we're a four man booth this evening, I would hold off on the Q and A. Though, feel free to ask questions while we do the review, of course. That said, we also have our third segment with the news and all that stuff. And MJF's got a new crew. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. That being said, we begin, as we usually do, with one of our clips of the week. And this one was a tough one. Both were so good that I just decided to get this situation some context as far as uh, Night Of and the Dynamite After. Okay. And we begin when the cameras turned off for the pay-per-view feed. And John Moxley, not dead. To his shock as well. Take a listen. Jacksonville. I think me and all y'all can agree on one thing. Kenny Omega may be a tough son of a bitch. But he can't make an exploding ring worth a shit. I see more dangerous shit on ridiculousness on MTV. What the f that? I'm still standing, bitch. Oh. Oh. Just not well. Oh. Well, folks, here it is. The big explanation everyone wants to know about. It's a little embarrassing, but 
you know, I'm me. When I went in that ring and I covered my friend thinking there was going to be this big explosion and all these fireworks, I caught a flashback to the last time I had this anxiety. Last time I had this kind of panic where I couldn't breathe. And that's when I was sitting in a jail cell getting ready for court and I had the guards walking back and forth telling me, we're going to take you to Rikers, boy. We're going to take you to Sing Sing, boy. And everything went black. That's what happened. Go ahead and make fun of it. Call me a coward, less of a man. I'm not speaking for you, and I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to those that understand where I'm coming from. Kenny, Kenny, you think this is a video game? Look at the heat, look at the heat. That's what I felt in that ring. Look at these hands. I didn't scar them up playing video games. You think you're the Joker? You think, you're the, you think this is funny? No, I don't. I don't think he was joking. I think he was really going to try to. No, me the there's no stuff. way. I think he was he really being the Joker. To, I think he really and you're Batman. To, he wanted to blow. I like that, but I think he really wanted to blow me up for sure. I don't think he's that nuts. It's 2020. Look, I don't know who paid for that bomb. I hope Tony Impact Khan. definitely did. You know that. Impact. Impact paid for the bomb. Definitely. That makes perfect Without sense. A doubt. Let me ask you a question. When that bomb came in the mail, did it come in a box with big bold letters that said Acme on it? I've made more explosive volcanoes in fourth grade science class. What the hell was that? Look, I had an explosive barbed wire death match live on pay-per-view, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. It is a cool t-shirt, but I didn't win the world championship. Ken, you were the better man that night at Revolution. But I did get a drinking buddy back. I knew that wasn't you, man. I knew that wasn't you out there. You know? World well, title does crazy things to I knew, you, you know what I mean? I know you. You know. I mean, you could have came out, you know, a little bit earlier. You know, I was getting the crap kicked Bro, out of me for about 18 days. minutes been a couple by three days. guys. But now I'm on pay per view. I, I got to get my eyebrows done. I got to put my Tim's on. You I don't want to go You know out my there. style, B. You know my style, man. It's 1998 forever in my head, B. I can't look bad on pay per view, huh? I'm glad you didn't get blown up and everything. Thank you. Same, same. Even though I still, I wanted to see a bomb go off. Like, you know. Yeah, a lot of people did, though. Look, Kenny, good brothers. <laughs> if you're gonna flash a weapon, you know this. Mm -hmm. You better use it. I love it in the, the second half, like that part of the, of the uh, Brahma work. Mox busts Ken Eddie's balls. Mox, <laughs> that, that's love. That's best friends yeah. right there. Shooting you the only shit. rib the ones you love, right, Matty? That's it. Uh, that is it. And that was menacing and heartfelt at the same time. <sighs> and the best part is we get to talk about that in the second half of the show because so oh they they they're, 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 they're more they're more than drinking buddies next Wednesday. That is for sure. That's going to be a busy day for AEW fan, a busy week for AEW fans, and kind of a warm up for the big one coming up in a couple of weeks with the WrestleMania week. But again, that's the third sag. We begin, ladies and gentlemen, with All Elite Wrestling Revolution 2021 from Daly's Place, Jacksonville, Florida. 1,300 people packed Daly's Place. Of course, they, they were social distance and masks and all that stuff. They were CDC compliant, as always. The show, uh, folks, is one of the rare things where you really shouldn't have skipped the pre-show. Because the pre-show, we got something nice out of the deal. Uh, it was... Uh, re Excuse me. Something... All right, sorry about that. That that, that, that happened. But uh, Rio and Thunder Rosa, they took on Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Rebel... Not Rebel... Unfortunately, she, uh, she she had a quote unquote injury, and was replaced by Maki Ito. We're not even in the paid part of the pay per view. Roll roof flies off the internet. <laughs> Sadly, I missed this part. I came in late. Yeah, you came in during the pay per view part. But for those wondering, Maki Ito, Joshi wrestler whose gimmick is literally a, a an idol who, and she was an idol when she started. And she got fired. There, yeah, there are a couple uh, of YouTube a videos YouTube. explaining the character way better than we yeah, could. There's, but. Uh, yeah, there's a great YouTube video uh, called Makito the Fired Idol on YouTube. 
highly recommend it. The research done is quite amazing and gets you all up to speed on Makito, what her story is. And essentially, she was an idol for a group called Link, but she kept on getting demoted and demoted and demoted by the management group because, according to them, she was too ugly. Which is why they eventually relegated her to variety shows and then eventually fired her without even telling her by putting up the lineup without her in it. Wow. Dick. I'm the anime guy. I should know this shit. <laughs> Well, we, we, we gave you a little bit of something. They Actually, the idol group was doing variety shows, including wrestling. She got involved. She had a couple of matches, and she did okay. And then she went full-time and probably not regretting it, I'm sure. But uh, her character got over during the tournament to determine the number one contender. We love it. And uh, Newman calling the chat. Hey, Tita, Manny, how are you doing lately? You know, we're hanging in there. Kind of missing the, I'm missing the bit of the travel where I get to be with my buddies, but soon. Yeah. Soon. Well, I'm doing fine. Um, life is basically the same for me. Nothing's really changed in the past year. Stuff happened with me. Yeah, there's, there's unfortunately a snowstorm with you. Uh, thankfully you survived. Yes. Yeah. And then the power went, and then we lost power all this, mostly, most of this week because of, because the wires corroded, but that's neither here nor there. Abaz says you're alive and all right. We're glad to see you're still around. Thank you, man. That is the truth, ladies and gentlemen. That is the truth. Okay, so the pay-per-view uh, proper started with the Tag Team Championship. Oh, Young Bucks, Madden Jackson. Daddy. Oh, sorry, what? Daddy, I got I to gotta share my opinion about that first match. Oh, that's oh, that's right. Go right ahead. Yeah. I, I hate I hate Maki Ito. What? <laughs> Excuse me? I hate, I hate her. Ask me why. Why? simple she never cooks she keeps a filthy house and she profanes all the time oh god damn it <laughs> queen of sims queen of sims bitch <laughs> <laughs> crown your majesty queen of sims this is why we brought him in permanently folks you just get the yeah. comedy that even i can't get <laughs> and, I, and T Dub and I try. <laughs> see, see, here's the thing: T Dub is good at trolling. It's the good kind of trolling, you know. It's not. It's not the the mean spirited, hostile kind of trolling that kind of floods Twitter these days. No, though, this is the fun, just like love to rib on you and give you a hard time kind of troll. Shit over here is just pure chaos. That is very true. Damn. <laughs> there is an extreme difference. That is yeah. very true. Yeah. Okay. Young Bucks taking on the inner circle. Chris Jericho, MJF, the uh, Bucks retained 1750. Solid opener, as per usual, from four world-class guys. Every time MJF wrestles, I am reminded of how goddamn good he is at goddamn everything. He is so good, so talented, and I wish we got to see him wrestle more. But then again, the fact that he doesn't wrestle too often makes every match he's in that much more special. And his selling is especially superb. His, it's his selling of, especially, good God. Go it's ahead. a case of quality over quantity. He doesn't there give you, you as much as others, but what you get is always mwah, superb. Superb. Yep. It was a nice little contrast between the high flying bucks and the grounded base team of um, Jericho and MJF. So it was a nice little contrast. I enjoyed it. That. It helped that they had a very good chemistry together. I mean, they've got these guys have been working together a lot lately. So obviously, they've had a chance to really begin to gel over the time. So when you get a match like this, you know you, these guys are already bringing their A game going in. Very much so. Very much agreed. All right, and I, I completely agree. The Bucks, obviously, they, they work with uh, practically anybody, and Jericho and MGF brought that chemistry, as you mentioned. Again, it's clash of styles, but a good one. In the next matchup, they put a ladder, they put a big golden brass ring that came out of Sonic the Hedgehog. The jokes. Uh, I thought that was later. Oh, yeah, wait, that was much later. That was much later. You got your schedule. Wait, you, wait. you got your lineup. I got up, it. Yo, I fucked up on that. It was a casino <laughs> tag team royale. That went <laughs> That's the one. I fucked That's up. <laughs> RVT Entertainment. Never without a botch. It's it's in my contract. I got to fuck up at least once, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck up once, I get paid. That's what it is. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, a tag that, team. That oh, yeah. There's a whole list. You can read it. I'm not. I'm just going to say this. This was basically a Royal Rumble with tag team rules in it, and it was fun. Uh, the winner was Ray Phoenix representing Death Triangle with, uh, uh, it was Ray and Pac, who, who was the team. The, the, he last eliminated Jungle Boy. Uh, of course, they're getting a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. As for me, watching this this thing go down, like yeah, it was immediately clear this was a Royal Rumble with a tag mm. with a tornado tag team setup. But I liked the fact that the idea of how they set this up. I loved how they did the eliminations. I love how even if you had one of your guys eliminated, you could still have a fighting chance of actually winning. So it didn't feel like you were one and done. And that really set up a fantastic ending between Ray Phoenix and Jungle Boy that just, like, it gave you that brief moment of could Jungle Boy actually pull it off? Because it was down to him, and then it was Phoenix and Pac still together in the ring. So it was like two on one. And the setup for that just gave you that little glimmer of could he actually pull off the upset? Uh, this was in, in, interesting for me because those those last two were my picks to win the whole tournament. When they with him the one whole battle royal, um, Lucha Lucha, I mean, uh, Death Jurassic, Triangle, Jurassic, Jurassic Express, and Death Triangle. Those were yeah. my two picks to win it. And you know, I didn't see the that that ending. I'm very very glad to see that that Death Triangle is getting a shot at the tag team de- belts. Yeah, so it was a really fun battle royal overall, and I I was honestly really hoping for Jungle Boy to win because of how much uh, steam he's been picking up. But at the same time, I know we're going to get a really fantastic match between Death Triangle and the Young Bucks. That is for sure. And and they kept, and keeping Jungle Boy that strong at the end means you know they're going to be next in line once the, the, that feud is done. It's been a continuous buildup for those two, and absolutely. It's coming. It's definitely coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Next up, Hikaru Shida did, taking on Ryo, Ryo Mizunami. Bleh. Rio Mizunami uh, for the AEW Women's World Championship. They went 15 10. They, they, they did good. They did real oh. good. It was half, I think it was, I think it was halfway through this match where I said to you guys, like, that's where it dawned on me. Like, Holy shit! I'm actually enjoying myself watching this. That's I think that is where yeah, it began. <laughs> it, it began with the with the with the, uh, the battle royal, and then you you were going. You were we were all invested in that match. And you're going oh, uh, to, to see these two Joji's just fucking tearing it up all over and outside the ring was absolutely insane. It was raw. It was psychological. There was a lot of psychology in this match. And you could feel it in every single move, the struggle between these two, especially from Shida, who they had made it very clear this that she had never beaten Mizunami. And that Mizunami had been boasting, like, even in 100 years, you'll never beat me. So that, that struggle to see Shida fight to prove her wrong just worked so well during this match. Oh, yeah. And on top of that, it was the, sort of a teacher-student type of dynamic here as well. Yeah, and you with feeling Nami calling herself Anaki as her name. Yeah, and I had to look at my phone a few times to make sure I wasn't accidentally logged into uh, Japan World because <laughs> I was getting some. I, I felt like I was looking at Shibata versus Ishii all over again. Ooh, and there's that. That's, that's a good comparison. That's a re- that's a reference right there. I'm gonna say right now, this is not only my favorite. Um, women's match all year but this is my favorite women's match AEW has ever put on because i just damn amazing and 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 it made me love ryu mizanami completely after last after after her match with um nyla rose and after this match i love ryu mizanami and i hope she sticks around because the women's division really absolutely teed up after the match of uh, Shida won, she was then attacked by what could be a new power stable in the women's division. Yes. So it's a uh, rebel, Dr. Britt Baker, and uh, Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose, yeah. And, and, and Vicky and, Guerrero, who's managing her. And perhaps Maki Ito. 
Yep, she was in there. She was in that group. Pay-per-view payday for Maki Ito. That's a half point right there, right up on the score. And, and to see Vicky Guerrero back coming from me was just like, there was a lot of nostalgia in this pay-per-view for someone like me who hadn't been watching in a long time. Like for some of you guys, it's probably old news, but for me, it's like, as someone who's who who last saw Vicky Guerrero right after she quit, that was just like, whoa, nostalgia bomb. <laughs> but that was a trip the other, for you. Yeah, but the the other girls also just really, and then to see, thun, uh, the, you know, Shida and Mizunami. Along with you know Thunder Rosa coming out to make the, to help make the save, to see them all come together, there was a that was beyond respect. That was like okay, you know Mizunami is like all right, you beat me, you're cool, you got my respect, and that proved it right there. I was like holy crap. Yep. You would never see that in WWE to that level. No, oh, you would no. you would find a way to get the heat back, and it's all neutral, and no one gets over. Exactly. But here, no, it's okay. Match is over. They're not enemies. They're not hated. They're not. They're 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 friendly rivals, and this proved it. And they, we need more of that in wrestling. Just friendly rivalries. All right. Next up, uh, Mira whooped an ass or two. Basically, it's Mira. The least. Yeah. yeah, Rusev. Uh, yeah, Miro turned into Rusev. Smash everybody, goddamn, in the fucking ring. No, uh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna stop you right there, Matty. <laughs> that was not Rusev. <laughs> that may have. That man ate Rusev for breakfast. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Thank you, <King. laughs> That man, Miro, ate fucking Rusev for breakfast. <laughs> that Miro was fucking ruthless that night. Jesus H. Tap dancing Christ. I was no, losing my shit. Yeah, last Miro time we saw Kip Sabian, yeah. they beat the crap out of best friends, Orch Cassie and Chuck Taylor. Go. <laughs> <laughs> get out yeah, of that last one. time we saw Rusev, he was getting beat up by Bobby Lashley, who was kissing his wife over him. So yeah, this is definitely not him. Oh no, no, yeah. no! I was talking peak <laughs> Rusev for the for the record. But yeah, yeah no, this is. No, but no, even no. then, fair Hero enough. Here fair ate enough. Peak Rusev for breakfast. It still had room for more. <laughs> no, this was, this was a different sort of animal than we're used to because this this was less about. Um, Kip Sabian and Mira beating the shit out of Chuck E.T. and Orange Cassidy. No, this was about Rusev establishing himself as an unhinged, complete psychopath. <laughs> yeah. The, the best example of that is at the end where he basically uh, knocks, um, say, uh, knocks one of them into Penelope Ford, who was yeah. standing outside the ring. It was, I think it was actually t uh, Kip. Yeah. He, he threw one of the guy. He threw one of them into Kip, who got knocked into Penelope Ford, knocking her down. And the uncaringness of Miro at the at the end of the match, after they had defeated the best friends, and Kip's just like, "Dude, what the fuck, man? You almost killed my girl out here." He's, and Miro's just like, "Yeah, fuck off, dude. I won. Go deal with it." Yep. Best the man. man. The man. This tag team could implode very soon, but no. Mm -hmm. It will implode. No, it's not going to implode. It's going to it's gonna detonate, and Kip Sabian's going to be right in the center of it. By the way, Did I expect the Kip Sabian press, uh, face turn before too long? Possible. I have to give props to Chuck Taylor for once again hitting the best power driver oh, I've ever seen. Oh, that was a beauty. That was I'll a beauty. I'm having to yeah. see a pile driver in wrestling again. Excellent stuff by Kip Sabian, and yeah, if this if this is the direction they're going with Miro, I'm all for it because if they keep doing psychopath Miro, I want to see him and Lance Archer just beat the shit out of each other. Just put them in the ring, say Russell, no, we're gonna fight, and they're just gonna have them beat the crap out of each other. That's what I want to see. And, and then Hell you tell yeah. Bryce Ramsberg, look, let them fight if they low blow too much DQ, but beyond the way, beyond that, get out the fucking way. It's You're them. there to count the three and stay the fuck out of the way. No, it's going to be Miro versus Lance Archer and the referee, the referee instruction is literally, all right, no rabbit punches, no hitting it below the belt, I'm going to get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> no, no, no. It's more like, all right, you guys are going to wrestle and I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I'm call me, call me I, when I, you I'd need like a, to call live me when you need a three you. count. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I'd like to live by tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bryce, where are you going? You're supposed to referee the match. Sorry, Tony, I'm not getting in the middle of that. I'm you re- you referee and keep it. You, you, you want to have it. a ref? You get in there and ref that shit. Yeah, you you want to ref? Yeah, go ahead and ref and keep your ass intact. Oh, um, let me know how that turns out for you. Oh, I, I would ref, but um, I got a cramp in my <laughs> draw. <laughs> And, 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 you, and, and you hear Cody going, and I'm not. It's going to be one of the Jacksons. It's like, nope. And the other guy's going to go, nope. <laughs> and down the line, it's going to, and down the line, yeah. Jake DeSink is going to go, forget, forget that shit. I'm the manager. And they, <laughs> they're going to go to Hangman Page. Go, he's going to have his whiskey and go on. Have Mox do it. And Mox going to sit back here. Nope. No, no. Nope. The, per- the perfect referee for this would be Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> he would just—he wouldn't be referee. Say, fight, and just sit in the corner, smiling the whole way. Hey, that's, yeah. uh, that's all he needs to do. <laughs> I fight the winner. For you. I fight the winner <laughs> and the loser. <laughs> I'll take them both. I'm hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got to move on. This is this has been fun, but we got we got to talk about big money here. Adam Page, Hangman Adam Page taking on Big Money Matt Hardy. Uh, it was a big money match. Winner received the loser's uh, first quarter earnings, and uh, Matt Hardy's pissed because he's lost. He ain't big money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big money ain't big money no more. <laughs> At least until April. <laughs> yep, uh, Matt Hardy had. A private part in his corner and i believe also at one point uh did he interfere in this match did mr prince of parkland interfere in this match i and knew we i remember know. big money interfered towards the end and then like a good chunk of the dark order came out to make the save and kind of hold them off while Pe- page okay. finished the job yeah the uh the the, the uh, private party interfered i do know that but i think that's about it um, yeah it's I do know that during the Battle Royal, uh, there was interference there to eliminate 10. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, the reason Dark Order didn't win, in my head can at least, is because of fucking five. Five! Papers! (laughs) I mean, 10 did his job. He was coked up for the match. What was five doing? (laughs) Playing with a shrimp dick is what he was doing. (laughs) Damn. Yeah. Shrimp dick. For, for okay, uh, let me. Let, I'm gonna have to catch up the shades on this one. We're, we're yeah. keeping up. With, oh, yeah. We're keeping up with uh, with being the elite cannon, essentially. <laughs> that makes sense. That Running explains gag. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that explains so much. But That's all I need. Five. Know. Where's the paper? <laughs> Nevertheless, big huge victory for Hangman Page, and at the end, big group hug. Big group uh, hug, uh, and. Uh, it's all but been made established and official that Hangman Page is part of the Dark Order, though. I mean, on Wednesday, they alluded to it, but no word of say he's he's in or not. But he's, yeah, they're buddy-buddy now for sure. At this point, he's not in it, but he's friends with the Dark Order. So it's yeah. more of an alliance than yeah. official membership. Yeah. Yeah, remember when, remember when AEW first got announced and they were trying to push Hangman as the, the first as an AEW world champion? And none of us really bought it. But now, looking at where he is and what he's doing, I can't, I can't, I can't not see a Hangman eventually become an AEW World Champion. It's the slow burn with him, and it's obviously working. They, they realized he wasn't ready, so took him down just a peg. You know, they didn't, didn't, didn't send him back to developmental. He didn't win that bad. He just they had to take him down a peg. Okay, let's 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 take it back and let's try to work you back up there. Gave him a glass of whiskey and just do your th- man, just do your thing with a glass of whiskey. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pretty much. That being said, hold on, I, I lost my damn it. Why did why did Chrome have to crash on me? There we go. I got you covered here. We're I we're up it. to. The... Okay. I got it. <laughs> Face of the now we're up Atlanta to where match. you fucked up earlier. Yeah, this is this is the part I was introducing. It was a ladder match. They put the ring from Sonic the Hedgehog up there for the face of the Revolution ladder match. 
for a for a match for the AEW Championship that happened on Wednesday. It was uh, Cody Rhodes, Penta, Jose Romero, Lance Archer, Max Caster, Ethan, all ego Ethan Page was the surprise entrance. Yes. But the eventual also winner got Scorpio Sky. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> but the eventual winner, as I was going to get, I was getting my. Sorry. Uh, he's okay. He's okay. I gave you later. Scorpio <laughs> Sky from SoCal Uncensored, who became the eventual winner. Uh, you forgot one, Maddie. No, I didn't. You yeah, remember, right? no. Cody, no, that, Cody, that, Penta, that was, Lance, Max, Ethan Page. Yeah, got them all. There was one, there was one more entrant, but they had to wave her off because she was confused. <laughs> it was it was Princess Zelda because she thought that ring would get with would be an all Smith paid night with Sonic the Hedgehog. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. You get it in there, there, baby. Get it in there. <laughs> You know, after I will never forgive you. <laughs> Is there something wrong, TWK of TWK reviews? <laughs> no, not at all. Why do you even ask? <laughs> and that shit is that to grump. And friends can fuck. And Jay's, that is how you counter TWK trolling. <laughs> so Hashtag Zaza I am so Sonic glad to have you here. Zada. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's okay. He's just gonna sit there with his trashy water burger. Oh, oh, here we go again. <laughs> oh boy, Maddie, uh, fight, fight, kitchen, kitchen, pork rind, pork rind. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So yeah, getting to the actual match itself for a fun <laughs> yeah, high spot. One point, a Canadian destroyer on a ladder. Yep. Ah! Ow! Mm-mm-mm. I remember that now. Oh god! I feel so that... bad for. So this is the point of the program where we start saying the L fuck a lot. <laughs> this Ugh. match, I I've seen some pretty gruesome ladder matches in WWE. This one match trumped all of them. Yeah, in terms of just sheer brutality. Yeah, I'd say the the only downside for me is a little bit of Lance Archer because you could see he's not used to the whole ladder thing. He's little not little... a ladder match. Guy. He was out of his element for sure. And it was it was great seeing Canadian Lanny Pator make his debut in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. Ethan Page for those keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian Lanny Pator, you cannot tell me otherwise. All the go, Ethan Page. And I, 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 and the interesting thing is, uh, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com during his preview show predicted it was Ethan Page. He was talking to him on, like, DMing him, going like, so, uh, you, you're going to go to any wrestling shows this weekend? And Ethan Page would respond with, no, what are you talking about? I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so he's pretty much <laughs> him the whole way through. Oh, he is so cool. I also feel bad because... Me and Maddie, how the fuck do we, of all people, not predict Ethan Page? Yeah, we've been covering his exit, his very public exit from Impact Wrestling, literally weeks before this show happened. This this did not cross our mind at all. What's interesting is, now he gets to work with his former boss again. Hooray! I, I think what had happened was you guys were probably way more focused on the next segment. More than likely, but we were we were covering both because we figured it's it's good. Well, okay, TB TBA, and we f- figured it's gonna be someone in the roster. We did we we couldn't we couldn't yeah. figure that part out, but yeah, the next one. Before you turn, I do. Yeah, we got we got to talk. Yeah, we got to talk about this match here. We got we get we got to uh, cover the rest no, of this stuff. Uh, my one criticism of the match is that when Cody was getting taken to the back, the camera the way it was, uh, yeah, the framed, hard cam. You see that like, you you see the tunnel, and you could see the crew, Arn and some of the doctors, and Cody for a bit, just hanging out there just, doing nothing. Grab ass. Let's chill out with a cup of coffee. Yeah, like for like a good five or so minutes, Cody was walking back and forth trying to get back through the tunnel. Doctor's like, no, no, no. Cody's like, fine, fine, fine. Five minutes later, Cody walks right through. Doctor's like, no, no, no. Walks back through. It's like. Just, and yeah, you can almost doing, hear one of the distracting. one of the PAs going, "You're still on camera, dumbasses." 
<laughs> you should have just had him go all the way through the tunnel and just wait on the all the way across on the other side and wait for his cue to come back instead of constantly being in the tunnel and just acting from the match because I did find that to be a bit distracting. However, yeah. Yeah. I did like the finish with Scorpio on top of the ladder, taking the brass ring and smacking it over the head of one of the uh, uh, vice, uh, what, the vice president, whatever the fuck. And it, it was one of my picks from last week. I and, it, and they're going with a heel, um, Scorpio Sky, and I'm all for it. I'm all I'm here for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Now the the segment the shades brought up was the other person that uh, appeared this particular evening for the first time in all elite wrestling history. Uh, it was the the signee that Paul White uh, hyped up, and uh, this is. Five, six days removed. And uh, at first, my opinion was like, oh, that's a meh. I tweeted that, actually. Um, I thought about it. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'm, I, I think I've been a, bit, a little bit too harsh. Because here's the thing. I think the entire wrestling internet, us included, overhyped this a little too much. Yeah, I remember oh. when the when I heard word that this was going to happen. Even I was like, wow, they're making the pretty big deal about this this must be something and they really big have. i mean and they should have because th guess what they were right they hyped it just enough we just blew it out of, out of proportion people were cracking jokes or people were saying like people were thinking like stone cold steve austin or the rock and i'm even i was sitting there going are you guys out of your fucking mind there's no way like people were saying john cena i'm like there is no chance in hell it's gonna be any of those names are you out of your fucking mind no, clearly it was Cena. He's 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 seen. He's gonna be all elite. He's gonna trade in his purple and red for black and gold. <laughs> no, they, and I think of course, they got, as soon as he pops him. out, oh TNH for two point oh, it's gonna fuck up. Look, they had one fuck up in the main event. They one one major fuck up doth, doth, doth not a TNA make yet. But let's no. focus back on Christian Goddamn Cage. Out to his TNA theme. Oh, folks! The one, the other part. When I, the 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 second part of my of my tweet was inaccurate for my thoughts. Now, the first part still is Vince McMahon fucked up Royal here. Yeah, because for those who don't know, Christian was in the Royal Rumble just this last week. The week prior. Well, the, the yeah, at the very begin at the the end of the month, January Royal Rumble, big fucking pop, big fucking hug, and you didn't sign him. Well, let's be fair. Let let's let's call what call a spade a spade here. WWE has never really treated Christian all that well fair throughout enough. his entire career, even during the Edge of Christian days. Edge was always the bigger draw and so they pushed edge and just left christian to rot hell even the one time they did push him oh that was rough okay here's your world yeah. title run and oh look what randy you want a world title okay christian that, the world title's going to randy now okay go okay okay thanks here's your world title shot and it's gone yeah i mean I'm not... one more match bullshit that they made him pull oh yeah so yeah, I'm, yeah. TNA treated Christian Cage better than WWE ever did. So yeah, needless to say, there's a reason why Christian got a little Christian Cage got a lot more love here to, uh, on on AEW because they know they'll treat him good here. And it's the yeah, same thing and, with um, Paul White and Sting and all the other veterans. All that experience going into those young minds and going, hey. You're, you know, you have to, someone comes up, hey, I'm thinking of a, of a spot, can you help me? And the one veteran going, uh, what about you try this, this, or that? It's huge. Yeah, and, and with with and, Christian, who's obviously medically clear to wrestle, we'll discuss that in a third. Yeah, but um, I can honestly say without hyperbole that Christian is one of, if not the most underrated wrestler the WWE has ever had because sleep on him too much to do i mean his wrestling style is so is very low key but it works he adapts to whoever he wrestles to he doesn't need to 
fly around the ring or do any excessively dangerous spots, but he'll get a great match out of nearly anybody. And if he's cleared, then the sky's the limit for what you can do with him. He and he and he's got a great mind for the business, and he will put over whoever needs to be put over. You know, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna um, keep this for the third segment, but I, I don't know if I should bring this up or not. Uh, one thing I'll bring up is Booker T's podcast where he talked about Christian Cage and how he, like Shin said, he is one of the most underutilized guys WWE has ever had, and Booker T has said he was legitimately upset that WWE let him go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, and it, AEW it, say it showed up with a reasonable, reasonable amount of money. He said yes, and uh, you know what? I'm gonna keep this clip I found on TikTok. I think this is from the Edge and Christian podcast from a couple years ago. I'm gonna keep that for the third segment because I think the mindset of what what's going on with the next uh, with that first feud that Christian is having is gonna be very important. It's it's contextual. There's context, as I'm trying to say here. Uh, yeah. We got to move on. We got Darby Allen and Sting defeating Team Taz, Brian Cage, and Ricky Starks. 1340, the official time. This was a cinematic match, as it should have been. Sting looked good. Yeah, they, they did this as a cinematic match for two reasons. One was obviously they had to have the ring cleared out to set up for what was coming afterwards. We'll get to that soon. Mm -hmm. And secondly, because Sting, even in his, even as, even though he's now back in, in gear... He's not going to be as good as he used to be. He's not going to be as able to keep up like he used to. So setting him up in something like this, keeping him in his element with the, the atmosphere that it creates, really helped to make him look as good as he did. And teaming him up with Darby Allen was just, oh, it was so perfect the way those two worked together. And to have Taz's crew try, you know, be as ruthless as they were. It was it was a one-two punch of, oh, yeah. And uh, Guts and Masterson in the chat, uh, cinematic match, match directed by Darby Allen himself. That is true, actually. Yep, he did most of the heavy lifting as far as directing goes. And the fact they let him have this much creative leeway shows how much they see of him for the future of the company. They're, when you give somebody that much creative control over a segment like this, that just speaks volumes for their faith in him, and it paid off 100% here. And also, Shin, I know yeah. why Brian Cage lost. It's because he kept his shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, man. He, if they, they, they just said, Brian, you got to keep your shirt on, bro. But I don't feel right with a shirt on. Put your shirt on, man. It's a street fight. I, I have to turn my shirt off. Put your shirt on, bro. And he kept his shirt on, and they lost. <laughs> But, you know, you know, mentioning the fact that, yeah, giving Darby Allen that much creative freedom kind of reminds me a lot, in, in a very different way, obviously, to how Impact treated Broken Matt Hardy. It, it, you know, again, cinematic matches, free, uh, the creativity to kind of do their own kind of shoot with that, and just let them, you know, give them the basics and just run with it. And you saw that here. And some of the spots that they filmed... The big one at the end, especially with Darby Allen first tossing the bat that Sting had thrown up there back down to him for the big save. And then for Darby Allen to fucking jump out that window and crash into one of Team Taz uh, through that wood, through that wooden, those wooden planks. Holy shit. You that was that. nuts. You definitely popped for that. Oh, you know I popped for that. That oh, was freaking insane. Buddy. And the, the one thing I will say, this, uh, say about the match, for, well, two things, really. Uh, one, in the, the way it was directed, i got to give Darby that because it made did something that I never thought was possible. It made Powerhouse Hobbs look even more scary than he already is because him just appearing in shadows and wearing that ski mask. We all knew it was Powerhouse Hobbs, but when he took it off, it just like, yeah, I don't want to ever run into Powerhouse Hobbs in a <laughs> anyway. He's yeah, I, I believe that is preferable, yes. And the second thing is the tone of the street fight, because all the cinematic matches that we've had in AEW were, were like broken universe stuff. They weren't bad. They were like, they were like Kung Fu Hustle. It, 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 it was it, Kung Fu Hustle has great martial arts um, scene in it, but very over the top, very cartoonish. This, if I could compare it to anything, this was like the raid 
it was dark it was brutal it was visceral and it just looked like everyone had been through hell and i was here for it i loved it there there was however one complaint i had about this match i think i know what it is <laughs> why in the ever loving fuck did you give this cinematic match commentary thank you thank you <laughs> this is very simple especially no no especially during the entrances when they had them driving out the comments that they that Taz, Tony Schiavone, JR and Excalibur were making during the their, as they were driving up you should have cut that part completely out you should have gotten there the air going shut the fuck up bell rings then talk yeah this was this this type of match that they were going for it sh they should have just they just kept it quiet just kept the yeah. ambient but as this much was as clearly I, needed that that silent ambiance just let the match speak for itself it did not need commentary maybe during the match itself you could argue but other the, the entrances no that should have been dead silence as much as i love the commentary team and we've all gushed over the commentary team it it really they, it really just took kind of took away from it. Doesn't kill the match, but it just kind of took away from it. Especially, I oh, sorry, go ahead, Tito. I was going to say uh, I one hundred percent agree for taking the commentary out for the entrances. However, during the match itself, I love Taz's sort of Heenan esque style commentary where anytime Team Taz is on, you know, they were taking the initiative, like yeah, go. But anytime Darby or Sting would be in control, I'd be like ah, th that's unfair. What are they doing? Come on, yeah. It, it, that to me again there's that nostalgia kicking it again to see those three guys you know obviously Excalibur is also really good as well that's you know but I don't know him as well as you guys do but Jim Ross Tony Schiavone and Taz that is three whole eras of wrestling commentary in one show holy shit <laughs> I'm just mad that they didn't they didn't actually do the um Botchamania um Taz reveal that, that they do with Jason it's Taz Jim. It's Taz! It's Taz! <laughs> oh, Taz right there. And That's since they're working with Impact Wrestling, they can bring over, it's Jazz! That's true. Jazz is in Impact Wrestling right now, as a matter of fact. Working with my ninth future ex-wife. <laughs> Jordan Grace, <laughs> yeah. For the last time, her husband, Mr. Jonathan Gresham, is going to come over to your house and stop a mud hole in you if you keep up that rhetoric. Yeah, and I've got a hibachi girl right for his octopus. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Gresham is uh, known as the octopus for those uh, who are new here. <laughs> he is an octopus. Now, octopus, because he's a, 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 a submission specialist who will break every bone in your body. No, he's Slowly. an octopus. Because he's an octopus. He has no bones. He is a cephalopod. He squirts ink. He changes his color to match his environment. He is an octopus. <laughs> but, 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 Shin, I have to ask. Is he an octopussy? A very oh. big octopus. Oh! Oh! Tito, okay. no. Tito, I'm sorry. Uh, you can go, go, go and argue with, uh, with, with Shin for a bit. I got a too sweet my buddy over here. For the <laughs> the <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> All right. This, but yeah, uh, one thing that surprised me is that Sting was the one who got the victory in the end. Yeah, you would think Darby Allen, but uh, yeah, yeah, he he took out Cage. I, I think that big bump was enough for him to be like, oh, yeah, he, he kind of earned his paycheck after that. It's like, okay, Sting yeah. can finish this. Like, I'm done. He got over with that. The thumb is up. Let let Sting yeah. have the win. <laughs> I yeah. am okay with the that. <laughs> what I like about the cinematic match is because it was cinematic. Sting did not have to sweat his face paint off. Yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. That's one of those things you don't think about. Yeah, so at the end of the match, Sting saw a full face paint on. That way he can make that dramatic look at the camera where he just looks off in the distance and looks all badass with that snarl. Oh, that was so good. Yeah. It's one of those things you don't think about when you're watching it because you're just so focused on the match itself. But then when you look back, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, that looks better that way. If anyone remembers, um, WrestleMania 31 did not look so pleasant. Uh, that's an understatement. 
No, sir. All right. In the main event of the evening, an exploding barbed wire death match for the All Elite Wrestling Heavyweight Championship of the World. Kenny Omega retains over John Moxley and went 25 15. The match itself, Al, fuck. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, I knew, like, it was funny. Maddie the whole night was trying to, like, scare me off. He's like, I don't know if you're ready to handle this. You sure you, sure you want to watch this? I knew you could handle your shit. I was more more interested in Kirk in, uh, Crystal, who was part of oh, the call. Fair. And I'm like, you sure you want to watch this, bud? He made it clear. He's seen some matches like that before. So he was like, I got this. You know, <laughs> credit where it's due. He, he, he didn't he even He held his flinch. own. He actually he held his own on that one. So kudos to Kirk Crystal. Uh, for that particular situation, but, oh, uh, but yeah, it so we was got, as we got to split this. Just... We have to split this into because I think our chat is is uh, mixing up the review here. There was the match, and there was the pay per view ending. Match, solid gold. Yeah, a perfect end to their trilogy. Absolutely. Just, uh, it was just brutal. My favorite one, my my absolute favorite spot in this whole match. I have to say it was when Kenny hit the one winged angel on Mox and it looked like I thought, is he going to break? Is he going to bust out of it? It's too early to go home. And they, and he just pushes his foot onto the barbed wire and use the explosion to break up the pin. And I'm like, oh, my God, that is genius. And it's, not a, is, kick out, so which, and it's not a kick out, which keeps the one wing angel intact as a as a as a world ender. It's a protected finish, and it kept it kept it protected in the most genius way possible. Absolutely. Yeah, and what's funny is that this is, in a way, a callback to Kenny's match with Okada, where they did the exact same spot, but minus the barbed wire exploding. Yeah, and I think it was the, it was the second match of Dominion, right? Uh, yeah, I want to say it was either that. Yeah, it was either that or their two out of three falls match where that happened. It was one of those two matches. So when the greatest wrestler of our generation can't kick out of it, you know it's a very protected move. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and uh, to say uh, one thing I love is they're of course they start off teasing the the barbed wire spots, and then after several minutes, eventually John Moxley, of course, being the baby face, takes the first leap into the exploding barbed wire, and we, and when they hit them, we got some nice explosions. With the only real bad explosion during the match being the DT on the outside to the barbed wire board, but even then. They still land on barbed wire, so that's fine. Yeah, though the thing is, is that yeah, Moxley did the move. It was Moxley's move that that pushed any into the barbed wire box into the uh, triple hell, as they called it. But he took more of the brunt of that than than Omega did. Omega missed it. Well, Omega was able to roll out of it because of the position of landing in that DDT, but Moxley landed all for completely into the barbed wire. His whole back was caught in it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, didn't work out quite there as planned, eh, John? <laughs> yeah. Nope. You guess how Renee was reacting when she saw that shit? Yeah, for those wondering, Mox on the couch in Japan. No, after that spot, she's like, on the moon. He's sleeping <laughs> out on the moon after this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, hey, honey, let me take her one of those scars. Rubbing alcohol. Oh, fuck. Oh, god damn it, honey. What the fuck? I told you not to take another barbed wire bump, did I? Fuck. <laughs> Guess you'll help learn now. Shooter, help me out. And Shooter just stand. <laughs> You're on your own, boss. <laughs> Though, of course, the ending of the match, a heel gonna do heel things, and of course, Omega did not fight alone. No, we did not, because we had parents from the Good Brothers as they helped just absolutely murder John Moxley for the next several minutes. Uh, um, including an exploding barbed wire bat. Yeah, that was admittedly like holy shit moment right there. It's like, damn. Oh, yeah. And you know, you know, John had to be getting a little PTSD seeing an exploding object in his face. Oh god! Calling back, to, <laughs> <laughs> calling back to a certain match in WWE. <laughs> I wonder he stopped moving after he got hit. Yeah, he's like, oh shit, not again. Oh no. no. Not, not again. Not again. <laughs> starts hallucinating at everyone. He starts he starts thinking that, that that Kenny Omega is Vince McMahon. No fuck. 
Uh, hey, John, you're all right down there? It's me, your friend Kitty Omega. Like, no. <laughs> no. 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 Get away, no. man. No. That's such good shit. No. Carl <laughs> Anderson comes up and he's like, what's going on, John? Uh, it's me, no. The no. Uh, no. I love you, fuckers. Oh God! Anyway. <laughs> that brings us oh, to God. this moment. Oh boy! The, now, Ooh. if the show ended the way it did, no explosion, just a, a straight up barbed wire death match with explosions on on the on that side. The way it is, it, you cut the, to the credits, and everything goes awesome. Four point five to five, depending on your subject or on on your opinion. Yeah, but this was advertised as an exploding barbed wire death match, and there were explosions. You got away with it, but they advertised but- a thirty-minute time limit bomb that was unfor- that uh, did not stop when the bell rang because the match went twenty-five instead of the thirty. <sighs> Excessive yeah. beatdown. Well, I'm just gonna keep it very simple because I know some of you want to de- want to debate this. The Good Brothers and Kenny, they keep beating him down. The countdown starts, and Kenny leaves triumphant, being a, a triumphant dick with Don Callis being a, being a prick, as per usual. 30 se- 10 seconds left. Out comes Eddie Kingston. Oh, shit, what the fuck, what the fuck? I can't move him. Fuck, I'm going to cover him. And... <laughs> popcorn fart. And sparklers. Gilberg, uh. Gilberg. <laughs> oh, Eddie me. Kingston, bless his heart, sold it like it was a death. Yeah, like here, you know, and, and to correct you a little bit here, Maddie, what he was trying to do, because if it was just simply drag him out of the ring, he could have done it in time. He could have yeah. easily drug Moxley out. No, he was trying to get the handcuffs off of him, which. Honestly, I got to call out Eddie Kingston. That was the dumbest thing you could have done. Get him out of there first, then worry about the fucking handcuffs. <laughs> like, seriously, dude. Priorities, fucker. But when he realized that wasn't going to work, yeah, then he covered him and, yeah, the, the popcorn fart. And, yeah, trying to sell. Now, we started in the clip earlier that, yeah, he excused that with PTSD type deal, which, okay, fine. But you, you, you know, but you're not fooling anybody with that. The only I have to bring up is Brian Alvarez's explanation as to why Eddie Kingston sold witches. His head was down, his eyes were closed, John Moxley's eyes were closed. All they heard was all the pyro going off. So as far as they were concerned, everything went to plan. But yeah, to be the fair, the way the way it's shot for those who didn't see it, big big pile of pyro, the sparklers, and the thing that was supposed to blow up. Only about two thirds. It didn't. It, it wasn't a wall of smoke. It was just two poofs. And like, somewhere, and somewhere on Mars, Marvin the Martian, after seeing this, goes, "Where's the kaboom? There was supposed yeah, the kaboom, to be a ring destroying kaboom. kaboom." Like I was, I think, I think most of us were expecting something on the level of Wrestling Society X here. <laughs> like, just, yeah, either that, either that or FMW one of uh, uh, FMW Anita versus Terry Funk. That kind of blew yeah. up. Yeah. And Instead, this was now, something that made they, that made WWE's pyro team go and laugh at them. You know, what's interesting is that they apparently ran multiple tests throughout the whole day, like multiple tests to make sure this was going to work. And in every single one of those tests. It went 100% according to plan. It was just this and one then, time. And then Murphy had the show up going, Hi, guys, you're about to do an explosive. Oh, I'm going to fuck it up for you. Yeah, who, who set these explosives? Milo Murphy? <laughs> we could joke about you, this all night, and we are going to, but yeah. we got to move on because I don't want Jace to stick around too long. He has stuff to do, don't you know? Indeed. So okay. I'm of two minds of this as far as rating this. But I'll let you guys do your rating first. Shades, you're the guest of honor, so you get to kick it, get this off. Your first review in so long, bud. What are you going to say? I, oh, I've got plenty. So, yeah, as someone who is the outsider, someone who hasn't watched wrestling in years, much less seen much AEW, 
I had a lot of expectations going into this. And I will say, for the most part, my expectations were met. There were some really good matches in here. You know, take away the goofs that happened. You had some of the best matches I had seen in years, if not decades. Like, this blows away the last 10 years of WWE out of the water, even with the goofs. So there was a lot I enjoyed about this. But I am I am a critic. I see the good along with the bad. And there were a few missteps here and there. Nothing that would absolutely kill it, that make this a bad pay-per-view by any stretch of the imagination. But to call this a five-star pay-per-view would be a lie. It had its problems. Like we mentioned, some of the commentary was misplaced during that cinematic match. And yeah, that ending, you can't ignore that. And there were some botches along the way. I mean, I saw some botches throughout some of the matches here and there. Some pretty bad ones, admittedly. But, you know, that just comes with the territory. I, I tend not to judge those unless there are a lot of them and they're really bad. Here, there were a few pretty ish ones, but nothing that killed the matches. So, for me, for my first AEW pay-per-view ever, I'm giving this, I would say, with the ending, this was a 3.5. You, t you take that ending out, you take that really botched ending out, you're looking at a solid 4.5 here. I'd say at least. So a whole point off just on the ending. Because I've always said, and I say this during my own reviews for what I do, the ending is paramount because yeah. everything was building up to that moment and it killed it. But it's not enough to ruin the pay-per-view, but it's enough to go, ugh, that wasn't as good as I had hoped it would be. So, All yeah, right. I do knock a whole point off of that. Shen. I uh, had a whole week to marinate over this, and uh, as, as crappy as the ending was, I can't, I, I can't say that this, this was a very solid, very good show of wrestling. Not as great as last year's Revolution. I don't think they'll be able to top that for a good long while. But all the matches, bangers to me. Uh, like Shade said, there were a few... Yeah, botches here or there, but nothing to just make you say, "Oh, this show is crap." But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go against the grain, and but, but that ending, I had to give it a four point one out of five. If you take away the ending, if the uh, the ending kind of knocked it down for me a little bit, but if you take away that ending, you still have a very, very good night of professional wrestling with a, a lot of young stars getting pulled up. We got a great ladder match. Best women's match AEW has ever put on. Uh, we had the tease of what was going to happen on Wednesday for a lot of stuff. Yeah, and Moxley and 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 um, Omega capped off a great feud. I guess, but even with the with the botched ending, I can't give it le anything less than a four. It's it was just too good for me to just just overly crap on it like that. D Dub. Okay, well, mine's very similar. You know, prior to that ending, this was shaping up to be a near perfect show, but of course, the ending knocks things down a bit. But I will say, they recovered pretty well afterwards. So I'm going to give this show personally a four out of five because depend. My final rating is going to be de really depending on how are they going to recover from this because if they were not able to roll the punches here, yeah, that would have knocked you down even more. So, yeah. but because they recovered just a little bit on Wednesday, got to give them a four. And I think I think they've recovered complete uh, enough to, that they could actually complete the recovery in a couple of weeks. I think they've done enough to to, to at least excuse that ending. Yep. In kayfabe, anyways. See, I'm of two. Like I said, I'm of two minds. One mind is, all right, we got to do. One mind is actually of okay. I got to be the critic, and I'm with the shades. Like at that explosion sucked, and they shouldn't if. They said they practice it. It's like, well, hey boys, practice uh, only. Practice only counts if uh, it's like on Super Bowl. Yeah, those practice balls do well, but uh, like Super Bowl on the Price is Right. Oh, those practice balls, you do good, but uh, you fuck up on that uh, on that uh, on that on that one ball, uh, you're not getting that car. That being said, yeah, it should be a three point five. But again, I'm thinking about it. I was okay. Take away the explosion. What do we give it? 4.5. So in my mind, take the math. What 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 do I... Bad ending, but it doesn't fuck up the pay-per-view. That's a 4. And if we do more math, you, you include a Maki Ito on pay-per-view, I'd just go 4.5 and go, yes! You see, at Sacrifice, 
everyone knows Maki Ito is going to win. <laughs> we were kinder to we were kinder to the pay per view than um, Brian Zane was. <laughs> yeah, Brian Zane was a little harsher. I'm assuming. No, he, yeah, he gave he, Tad. he gave Kenny Omega versus Moxley a a one star out of five. Whoa. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't go that far. Fucking hell, man. Ooh, I don't know he so he far. did he did the thing. I think he did the mistake a lot of people did with the uh, with the match. They kind of did the end of the uh, the, the pay per view along with the match, which I mean. It's subjective. I'm not gonna dis. D- 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 I'm not gonna discount that I- that a- a- opinion, but you can't. I can't disagree either. Unfortunately, one out of five though. Oof! After they like told each other like that, and and they did it so psychologically as well. It's not even funny. Yeah, oh, so I would have said at just... least a solid two point five for that match, even with the batch ending. Higher if you took the ending out. Yeah, take the ending out. That's out. a four star match. Yeah, take the ending out. It's one of the best death matches we've ever seen. Yeah. Take the pay per view, so- no blow up ending. It's a four star match. Yeah. And I'm going on the Brian Zane scale here. It's a f- top match will be, top marks will be four stars, it, for sure. That said, though, yeah, I'm keeping it out of four. I mean, it's not it, for me. It's like it's 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 a case of rewatching it, and I'm like, you know what? Take away that ending. They did good. That's a four point five. You got you got to take some some minor nitpicks away. It's it's not perfect. They ain't topping last year for sure, as Shin said. But that's about it. Shane's. I know you can't stick around for too long, but uh, you mind? I think we need to plug our show tomorrow. Uh, you have no? Are you doing uh, anime Mavericks tomorrow? Uh, no. We're doing our normal watch party tomorrow. Normal actually. watch party on the Discord, and uh, Sunday Toka Riffs Live, Kara Major Finale Fun. Indeed, indeed. Well, I'm finally finishing up that before we take a bit of a break. And then, of course, for me personally, I have, of course, the uh, anime takeover. I've got just put out my new review today of Keep Your Hands Off, Azoken, a very, <laughs> very good anime. If you have not seen that yet, check out the review, see what I think of it, and prepare for the fun. So check that out. Otherwise, boys, it has been an honor and a pleasure to be back here once again. Don't know if I'll be coming back often, but you never know. You know, the, the seat's always open. You know that. And Rinico, it's not the end of the weekly era just yet. We're just taking a, we're just taking a month off. Yeah. I think we need to explain that a little better there. Yeah, we're taking a month off because we we're, we're burning out, man. We got to slow down or else we're going to kill ourselves. I think that goes for anything. You know, once you do something for so long, especially on a weekly basis, you kind of need to take breaks here and there just to keep things fresh and to keep yourself no, I, 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 what you're doing. I think what he's saying is, is that the idea that when we come back, we're going to be doing a bi-weekly, like we said. We're still hashing out the details on that, but we'll let you know tomorrow. We, we've come up with ideas and all that stuff. We are going to talk it. We are going to dis- discuss this a little bit more uh, during the time off as well. So this is not the end of the weekly era. We're still going to do weekly shows. It's just the format may change. We shall see. Anyway, there you go. have a good night, everybody. And you guys, the rest of you guys have enjoyed the show. You Thanks do for- that. Yeah. Right. Coming back. Later. Hey. hey. See you later, boss. <laughs> All right. That being said, boys, we got to move on. I'm we got to go. No, I'm sorry. Oh, he's, he's gone. Left. He's gone. Yeah. That fucking piece of shit. <laughs> See, this is... No wonder you don't show up to the tsunami call anymore. No, I'm just fucking with him. I know. <laughs> All right. That being said, we take a break. More news when we come back. Don't go away. We got plenty to discuss, folks. Don't worry. And now a word from our sponsors.
Promotional consideration paid for by the following. My brothers taught me about wrestling, but I taught them about eating. So he brought us to Pizza and it's all you can eat buffet. You get hot, fresh pizza. Thin crust or pan. Plus, there's plenty of spaghetti, garlic toast, and a salad bar. All for a super low price. That's why I'm paying today. Kev, let me pay. I'll pay for this one. You two pay for the pizza to go. Pizza, pizza to go. go? I thought you were full. Uh, these are for Dad. Yeah, sure. <laughs> For pizza out, it's pizza in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is WMOB Mobile. 12 on your channel dial and 12 in the TV ratings. I know right now I'm the last person you want to see. I know that. I know you're not happy with me, but I need to show you something. I need you to see this. Oh, sure, sure. Listen, you got a lot of guts showing up here after what I said and I meant it. Sammy, you're dead to us, man. Chris, we don't just want listen. You here. Chris, just listen. After everything we've been through, from the first dynamite to now, everything we've done, I need you to listen to me. I need you to see this. Just look at it. Look. Tonight's the night, boys. We have been talking about this for months. I think we can all agree it's a time right now for some new leadership in the inner circle. I think we all know who that should be. Tonight, we cut the head off the snake. Tonight, we get old Chris Jericho a nice little dirt nap. What do you say, boys? Okay. Let's do it. See y'all out there. Well, Chris, I didn't want you to find out this way, but oh well. Get him! Oh my God. I can't believe this. They're outnumbered here, guys. Whoa! Oh. The worm has turned. Yeah, like I said, a rat. Uh, now hold on a minute. Now hold on a minute. Shut up, you stupid son of a bitch. Ouch. You really think we don't talk to each other every single day, huh? Huh? You really don't think we were waiting for you to hang yourself? MJ, I'll tell you this right now. Since I'm the one that brought you into the inner circle, I'm the one that's going to bring you out of the inner circle. Yeah. Oh. oh man, that's a little embarrassing. Well, I can't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this footage home and watch it. All On week. behalf of the inner circle and Chris Jericho, your ass is fired. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Chris. And on top of that, we're gonna give you a little old school inner circle beatdown. No, no, right no, no, now, no, 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 hey. no, 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 Chris, 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 hear me out. Come on, get Chris, on. I didn't want to take over your inner circle. Chris, I swear to God, I didn't want to take over your group. I swear, man. I swear. He's crying. Because I was too busy. Building my own. We're back on the WrestleCast. RVT Production. Automatic Spotify, YouTube, Podcast and Places. Maddie T-Dub and Shin Tiger Curl. Yeah. MJF. And why is my hand cramping in a four again? Did it again. <laughs> so yeah, MJF headlining with FTR with Tully Blanchard, Wardlow, and Sean Spears. If if, if you get, I often bring it up on here and on Riff Downs about my love for. David Xanatos yeah. from the Gar Gargoyles. 
And I often mention a Xanatos Gambit. Gentlemen, what we have here is perhaps wrestling's first example of a Xanatos Gambit. This was immaculately. This was immaculate. I know you explained it to us, but for those who may not know what it is, ballpark it for us. And for those in the audience, because did, did, I think you said it perfectly when that happened. It's it, it's it, I'm a, I'll go do TV tropes official um yeah um, definition of this. A Xanatos Gambit is a plan for which all foreseeable outcomes benefit the creator, including ones that superficially appear to fail. The cr the creator predicts potential outcomes to thwart the plan and arranges the situation such that the creator will ultimately benefit if their adversary quote unquote succeeds in quote unquote stopping them. So in think, this think case, even if MJF was kicked out, he had a group to fall back on. He no, the group plan was, B. The group was his plan A all along. It, it, the them the inner circle turned on in, on Jericho. That was plan B. He was like, okay, my plan B didn't work. Guess I'll go with the main one, which is his own faction, which was built up right in front of our faces in secret. This way, and, and the true, pieces man. just started to fall together last week with Sean yep. Spears Sean. doing the interference for FDR and Tully. And we thought it was, they were just creating another four horsemen. No, this was MJF masterminding. Uh, he used the feud that FTR was having with Jurassic Express as a pretense to hide the fact that he was building his own for your, stable. For, yeah, for your old school TV fans, he pulled the J.R. Ewing. Yeah, it's, I've I've been I've been uh, binge watching Dallas shows. Yeah, I'm addicted on that. But yeah, that's basically what it what it is. He pulled the J.R. Ewing. Yep, and he it's... did it so masterfully. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody. I guarantee you, any any uh, reviewer in the IWC worth his salt did not predict this. I no. didn't. No. Guys didn't. Brian Zane didn't. JD from NY didn't. Solid Monster didn't. Jesse didn't. Uh, Papa Dave didn't. Nobody predicted this. We all thought it was just he was just going to turn on them, and the inner circle was just going to be led by MJF. And MJF swerved everyone. Everyone. No. no. I told you. It's all about the swerve, bro. I knew it actually makes sense when you think about it like why would mjf want the want chris jericho's hand-me-downs enrico manny that's ancient schools so i know i know i've been I've been, I've been binging a lot of old school stuff believe me but at the same time am i wrong but back on the subject mjf in reality, when you, you when you analyze everything, MJF wanted to be in his own faction. That's what he figured. As you know, look, I got I got to find a group of people. I can't just do it with me and old Wardlow here. I gotta we got we got to group up, and he went with the inner circle. That uh, that event inevitably went wrong, but just in time to enact his his big plan. And Tully Blanchard is a big deal. He's got to that that's that's promo central right there. FTR is a great tag. It's you think about it, you go, oh my god, this whole faction makes a whole lot of goddamn sense. The entire faction is a perfect counter to the inner circle. You would also the, got to the chat. Uh, I did see someone on Twitter notice that MGF's gear on Sarah Sunday night was reminiscent of Ric Flair. Ooh. True. True. God's good god, call. But it is. He was wondering why no one like. Uh, let's see. Uh, no one thought MJF would be Ric Flair. He said that, and would, to which I responded with that comment, saying, that, "You know, I can't remember who it was. It was either uh, fuck was a Sean Ross Sapp or David Bix, one of those two, uh, who know that you know MJF's gear sort of reminded them of Ric Flair's, which might have been nice foreshadowing. He's had that robe before. We've seen that robe before, but it, 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 I don't think trunks. it clicked until after. Not the robe, the trunks. Oh yeah, the trunks for sure. Then yeah." But he's had that like, role before. And like I said, the MJF's entire group was made to like be like an, a counter to the inner circle. Think about it. it. Jake Hager, you got a big guy in Warlow. Proud and powerful, you got FTR as the counter. Sammy Guevara, 
you got Sean Spears. And of course, for Chris Jericho, you got um, MJF. I have to ask, does this mean that Wardlow and Jake Hager aren't going to hate fuck anymore? No, no, they're good. Just, it's full on war now. If, they, oh. if there was ever if there was ever a reason for blood and guts, it would be that. I think I hear a lot of talk about that. Yeah, they, they. Yeah, a lot of people are talking about that. I think. I, I guess we're going to talk about that now because it makes sense now. The, what the buildup is. First big crowd show since this, at the end of uh, at the end when the CDC World Health Organization say, "All right, all coast is clear. Y'all could do what you were doing before the pandemic." There's going to be a big show. I think the Blood and Guts match is probably going to happen sometime in either August or September by the current uh, speculation yeah. things. Plenty First big time. show back. First big show back. Or the the approximate equivalent, Blood and Guts, MJS New Faction, Inner Circle. And And thinking about it, I think this might be AEW's first true stable war. Oh uh, yeah, and but after do you think they could build for a match that that that's so far away, all the way into mid to late summer? It's a stable war. Some of these last for years. They got they got plenty of uh, plenty of material to work with. Just that I hope FTR versus Proud and Powerful Hager and Warlow going at it. Sammy and Sean Spears going at it. Sean Spears is so underrated. Hell, and hell, hell you him. still have that 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 runoff of Sammy versus MGF that they've they've, they've built they've built up. That could be the launching shot. Yep. So much, but with this one, with this one, I will say this is probably the greatest swerve of the decade. Maybe even maybe even ever in professional wrestling. I wouldn't say ever. I mean, there was the formation of the New World Order. But this then is definitely fantastic. Absolutely, it, uh, I say it's a solid second uh, under the under the new world order. A solid second. Right, I can expect that because, like, yeah, I love it when they when wrestling actually gives you a swerve that you legitimately do not see coming, and the payoff feels truly earned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we're at right now. This will take time. We'll, we'll, this will have to marinate for a while, and a good thing it, it, this is faction warfare. Yeah, the first shot when when inner circle regroups, re, uh, re, uh, uh, regroups and uh, recovers, uh, the war's home, and dynamite will be will be all the better for it. Uh, we gotta we gotta move on to the other big development. Obviously, we we discussed this during the pay per view review, but uh, Christian Cage, elite his big his first big feud, looking to be Kenny Omega. Yeah, I'll let, we have to go over this segment to full. So, Christian was originally going yeah. to have his promo segment, but out comes Kenny Omega with Don Callis and the Good Brothers. They go to the ring to gloat about Sunday night, how uh, everything went to plan. Well, almost everything went to plan. Almost, but, yeah. <laughs> as Chip went out, for them, it was their own Xantos Gambit because if things went right, hey, no more Moxley, he's gone. But if things went wrong, oh, well, now he looks like a fool. Ha, 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 ha. That's uh, that's actually a subdivision of um, the Xanatos game. We call that Xanatos speech, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. ah. All righty then. Thank you, v yeah. thank you, tvtropes.com. Yeah. And thank you, Shin, for educating us. Learning new things every week. You were missed Tuesday because we didn't get a world history lesson that week. Oh, I feel we missed you so much. You'll get it this, this Tuesday if my power holds up. <laughs> Yay! For sure. So they go to the ring and start uh, mocking the segment. And then out comes Eddie Kingston to it. Then they start mocking Eddie. At one point, Kenny looking to Don, he falls on the ground and goes, 69 me, 69 me, Don. There was a countdown, by the way, during that bit. I'm just saying. Yep. That, that, that is going to be the quote of my life. When no I more forget. You know, now there needs to be a t-shirt. Kenny Omega, 69. When, when I am old and surrounded by all my f future ex-wives, I want my last words to be, 69 me, Don. <laughs> oh, I, am put, I am put into the ground. I want my, my tombstone to read, Greg Scott Haynes, 69 me, Don. <laughs> Don Whistler eventually 
does a biographics video on me, I want him to cap off the video saying, and, and he can say, you can sum up all of Greg's entire life with with that clip, with that clip, sixty nine me Don. <laughs> I'm pretty sure by the time you're dead, so will those to biographics as well as Don. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's good. If, the, if there's one thing about that botch, I will love t- it's the fact that they gave us that line. They turned that into chicken soup. Is what they, they did. did. And, I, and that's one of the reasons why I was able to give the pay review ring just a bit higher because this company has just proven so well that they can roll with whatever punch you throw at them. WWE, before- they edit the shit out of it and they, they never speak of it. They Chris Benoit, the goddamn thing. Yeah, WWE seems almost afraid of failure, whereas AEW's like, okay, we fucked up there. Let's roll with it. Let's see what we can do with this. AEW turned, they didn't turn lemons into lemonade. They turned lemons into 100-year-old wine from France. Damn. (laughs) They didn't turn it into a a lemon liquor. And of course, uh, Ken Omega then went on to uh, try to antagonize and he keeps over and over again telling him come on hit me hit me what are you gonna do there's so many of us we can all kick your ass come on first shot's free come on come on to which eddie kingston gives him one punch and knocks kenny omega out on his feet out of his shoes pretty much of course uh you know the the, the we got to speed this up a little bit but uh you know good brothers do what good brothers do they beat up uh, a particular person in particular and out comes mox Big schmoz, they leave, Kenny's in the ring, waking up, out comes Christian. And no, no thing, there's a big schmoz, of course, Don saves uh, Kenny, and he left the belt in the ring, didn't he? Christian picks it up, looks at it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that. Feud. Now, I want to calm some people down, because I've been seeing all week... Panic over Christian becoming the next world champion. No, blah, 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 no, 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 no. This is not TNA, folks. So this is this. Actually, we could put this in context. Here, this I believe it's a clip from uh, the Edge Christian show. They had a podcast, and uh, this I found on TikTok. Uh, the person who put it out is putting your uh, putting you over on TikTok. This is the, this is the clip, and uh, I apologize for the potato quality of it. But here's here's what he said. Kenny's so good, I started to think of the spots and things that I could do with him in a match. And I like, I'm still yeah. wrestling. And I was like, well, I could I could do this with him here, and I could do this and this and this, and boom, boom. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm trying to watch this match. And I wasn't even paying attention to the match because I was thinking of things that I could do with him. That's how yeah. good he is. That I could picture myself having him, like, tearing it up and having an amazing match with this guy so i had to turn it off and just like kind of clear my head and then come back and watch it a couple days later and just actually watch the match so that's yeah. a testament to how good hey, it is hey. that you know that's 2018 by the way yeah. three years later here we go we get to see oh, christian work that. with kenny omega yeah and he's got ideas and i should note that Christian will not even be the first person getting a title shot next. That is going to be either Moose or Rich Swan. Yeah, for and we I think we we we, we might as well get on the, that little list of yours. But yeah, big doings on Impact. Let's talk about that. Right. So yeah, Impact Wrestling. They're having a match. Rich Swan versus Moose. Winner becomes the Unified Impact World Champion, and the winner then goes on to Rebellion to a winner take all match with Kenny Omega. Winner takes winner. both belts. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't hear you over the sound of me jizzing my pants. <laughs> oh, believe me, there's a lot of that going on on Rift on Rift Zone. Believe you me. So, so uh, Bushmaster versus Moose, belt for belt. Winner faces Omega at the at the next Impact Big PPV Extravaganza. Winner gets winner winner gets both uh, the unified belt and the other belt too. Belt Hunter Kenny Omega. Confirmed. There was a clip, but once that announcement was done, you cut back to the office, uh, Scott DeMore's office, and it's Don Colin Kenny going, It's starting. Belt Damn. Collector confirmed. Indeed. And you, know, you could call, and you could call, you, and you can obviously call spoilers all you want, but folks. 
they've brought this up at the beginning when what when uh, Kenny was explained out on impact the first uh, back in December they're going for that gimmick and it's going and if it goes the way it well it goes it's gonna work yep of course, other things happened on Dynamite, including Maki Ito singing on the stage while her music was cut, and there was a huge brawl happening in the ring because <laughs> she brawl starts. And literally, the brawl starts, and she's like, and the music continues, and she's singing, she's singing. The brawl starts. The, the ref rings the bell, and she's still up there working her goddamn gimmick. Then, when Sheeta tries to interfere, gets hit in the head with a mic. Yep. Yeah. V1, they, they, they had, had to give some slack because they, the, the, the microphone shots were shit. They kind of were. But Thankfully, her head was much better. Uh, the, her co-cashy is spot fucking on. So she recovered nicely in that particular case. But it's like, oh, Makito versus Shida, even if it's not a title. Yes, please. Speaking of, of Riho and Maki Ito and all mm -hmm. the other women, Maki and Riho will be headlining the first episode of W Dark Elevation. Yes, I saw I saw the um the the match list and it's gonna be a banger. Yep, we're gonna place Monday at 7 p.m. on AEW's YouTube page. And of course, next week on Dynamite, main eventing will be a lights out match between Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker to finally mm -hmm. solve their feud for all. And Riniko, she's a fan of T Dub. T Dub's always working his gimmick, to be fair. But it's much appreciated for thinking about me. Yeah. I would love it if Makito's a fan of mine. That way we could both simp for each other. <laughs> if Makito's a fan of this show, I think I think we were, we're like done. Show's over, topped. <laughs> we we ain't topping <laughs> that for a while. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> well, of course, um, Ethan Page made his Dynamite debut, but unfortunately, TNT was like, Fuck you, Ethan! There was some audio fuck-ups on the TNT side. My God. Yes. I didn't hear much from the... I don't know how the international fans heard it, but V1 heard the match went over clearly, so it must have been a TNT thing. Yeah, this yeah. was a TNT <laughs> fuck-up, because uh, I actually went back... Uh, I, I I streamed it as I usually do. I mean, I'm not I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed of seeing it. But I heard those fuck ups. I'm like, and immediately I switched sir. I switched uh, services and I went to the TSN side, and it was bitch clear. But yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. TNT fuck up, folks. The only good thing about this fuck up was that. A lot of people were exposed to the goodness that was "Ain't No Mountain" by by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. <laughs> Who doesn't love that song? Someone at TNT got got binned for that, but whatever yeah. the case. Don Callis saw the Ethan Page show up, and he's like, "Oh, you motherfucker!" Somebody splice in the feed. Uh, and, then the Tony Con, and then Tony Khan went, bitch, who's running AEW? You and me. And not kayfabe, Either shoot. Bitch. And Don went, fuck. Never mind. And it's, and it's interesting because Ethan Page segment starts, feed gets fucked up. Ethan Page segment ends, feed goes back to normal. Interesting, that. Again, coincidence. Yeah. I call it coinky dink on that one, but I, I yeah. So bad for him because first he debuts and there's all this stuff overshadowing him in the main event. So no one's talking about Ethan Page, and then he finally gets his moment here and TNT fucks it up. Just god damn it! Again, internationally went over fine, and in whatever they had, whatever feed they do for the uh, on demand stuff, it has been fixed there. I'm assuming so. Yeah, they they've yeah. uploaded the full match on YouTube actually to make up for this. Yeah. Yeah, Tony said that on uh, just after it ended. So they're trying to fix it. There's a lot of plate spinning on the fixing department, but you know. And JC, it was a coincidence. He's right. It's it's pure coincidence, and it's not even T it's not even AEW's fault. This is TNA. T this is TNT's fuck up. So, yeah, so it is what it is. There, unfortunately. And, uh, Indeed. Uh, moving on. 
we had Darby Allen defending the TNT title against Scorpio Sky, and it and was match home. of the goddamn night, mind you. And this is the same night that we opened with Phoenix versus Matt Jackson. Yeah, high fucking bar, by the fucking way. That sliding into the cutter was a thing of beauty. And uh, in the end, Darby Allen wins with a roll up, and it just that that one loss, and of course at the end, Darby Allen coming over and just slapping uh, Sky's shoulder, just giving him like, in, "Hey, in, you did in his way, thing. in his own way of of sportsmanship." You know, he could, didn't want to Scorpio take his hands off. Like, but of yeah. course, I'm assuming in Scorpio Sky's mind, he's like, "This kid's treating me like he's the veteran. This motherfucker." And, and then he snaps, breaks his leg. Goes a weasel. Yep. Pops the leg with the uh, ankle lock for an uh, excruciating amount of time. Mm-hmm. At the end, as many people pointed out, he pulled the Bob Backlund. I said that on Twitter. He was looking at his hand, his, his hands are shaking, and then smile. You go, what the fuck have I done? I like it. You mentioned Somewhere. that, Shin. Uh, he one brought that up during his uh, recount of yep. the show. And somewhere Bob Backlund is smiling. You are doing a great job, young man. You should run for president because you do not be American. You see, Scorpio Sky, just like me, does not eat marijuana. No God. For those who have not kept up with OSW One, Shame Two, they covered uh, a good chunk of the New Generation uh, era and. Uh, Bob Backlund was heavily involved. Bob Backlund was a scary son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Moving on to the world outside of AEW. Lee Moriarty has ended War Horse's 582 day as the IWTV Independent Wrestling Champion, marking the end of an era. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, Dave, please take off your hats and observe a moment of silence for the end of, of War Horse's. Uh, War Horses run as the, uh, as the independent TV, world TV champion. May have lost the title, but there's what we all know one thing for true. He rules ass. And he's on a goddamn video game, which has not been released on Nintendo yet. Retro Nintendo! Update on that. Oh. So they did a development vlog, vlog earlier in the week, and apparently what happened was... That Nintendo tested had someone test it out, one of the people test the whole game out, make sure everything functioned perfectly. It turns out one of the buttons on one of the Joy Cons was not working properly. So Ooh, they had big uh, fuck had up. Okay. So they had to fix that up, resend it in, and get it resubmitted and recertified and all that jazzy stuff. So if everything goes perfectly fine, it should be out in the next week. Hey, you know what? At the very least, they're on top of it. That's good. I'm also happy to hear that Nintendo has people testing out these indie games. Hey, you sure know what? Absolutely. I think at this point we could stop uh, bitching on Nintendo for a week. Yes. Water would be proud. Yeah. <laughs> true. Very true. And in a video I saw earlier today, uh, Ciclone Ramirez Jr. and Benito were walking around a market in Mexico City and putting masks on people who were walking around without them and spraying them down with sanitizer. Good for them. Good. Good. I love, I love seeing send, that. Send a bunch of those luchadors to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, don't, worry, video, no, don't worry, Greg. Like, don't, worry, don't worry, Shin. We got you covered. You, you know you're, we know you're good. We're talking about the rest of the mouth breathers. No, just send them to, to Greg Abbott. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> First and foremost. <laughs> schedule an appointment. I found out the video because of... I found out the video because of Cole Cabana sharing it. And under the video, I saw a comment from Rex Chapman, who makes videos go viral on his Twitter account. So this thing, this video is about to go super viral. Oh, buddy. People are, a whole bunch of people are about to learn who Ciclo, uh, Ciclone Ramirez Jr. is and Bendito. And the thing about uh, Ciclone Ramirez Jr. is, if I'm correct, and judging by his mask, he's the son of Hudokan Ramirez, or at least some sort of relative. So, big fucking deal. Yeah. And if anyone does know who Hudokan Ramirez is, he's the guy who invented the Hudokan Rana. Ooh. Like I said, big fucking deal. Speaking of a big fucking deal, 
WWE have announced their first entrant for this year's Hall of Fame, and it is other than Molly Holly! I am happy in my head fucking place. Mighty, Mighty Molly, Molly in the hall, baby! Still I am wait. very happy with this as well. And uh, maybe she comes out to the Mighty Molly music? Maybe she comes out to the Molly Holly music? I don't know. Nah, we'll she's going to come out to the Mo Molly Holly music, but... Uh, Dude, hurricane to induct? Yes, please. Not Shane yeah, Helms. I can see that. Not, hurricane. Not Shane, Shane hurricane. Helms. The hurricane. It has to be the hurricane. Doesn't have to be in full span next game. We gotta keep it classy, but Tux, green die, at the very least. It has to be the sound effect too when he comes in. Whoosh. Speaking of whoosh, <laughs> Kai and Gonzalez were declared the first ever NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, and they were whooshed away the same night to Shotzi and Moon. <sighs> oh, meanwhile, at the shit show. And pe I, people I, I still take shit. Every time I take a dump on WWE, I always say, well, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that, 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 that. Tell me I'm fucking wrong, assholes. So they introduced another pair of tag titles for a brand that doesn't have a tag division. Now, to fair to NXT, they they do I'm have no a bigger division. To be fair, so no they can pull us off. Uh, by the way, by the way, for the record, by the way, I do have to play this for the record. And nothing of value was lost. So, when I was on Twitter watching Dynamite, I started seeing all this stuff about new tag team champions going to Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. I'm like, well, what's going on? I had to piece things together going on my timeline because. No, this made any fucking sense. No, so it didn't, what happened it didn't was, either. I just watched the YouTube videos, and chronologically, it's really regal, giving the white straps to, to, to the Dusty Cup winners for, for as a make good for the fuck up with the with the women's tag team championships. What that's a big fuck up right there. And then later in the night, and it's there and they're gone. Now, I'm sure the match was good, but I'm just wondering, like. Okay, why not instead... Look, action, fine, booking, oh. shit. This is WWE 101 right now. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, okay. You know, I make the joke, but actually I have watched the match. It was fine. It was actually good for, for what we get, what we got out of the deal, to be fair. move. But yeah, this is... This is, again, Vince to... fucking with, with something he shouldn't be fucking with. And hopefully... When the move happens to Tuesday, and at this point, it may as well fucking happen at, at that point. You know, with the two big takeover nights, one on the USA Network and one on the on the on Peacock, and that's another goddamn can of worms right there. You you you, yeah, you, as it turns you would out. think once they move to Tuesday and they don't have to fucking worry about fucking over AEW again for a while. It's gonna go back to Triple H going, okay, okay, asshole, out of the booking room. I'm booking it now. Yes. Out. Because, like, out, old man. I'm sorry, like, I, I honestly think that the whole tournament should have just been for the tag belts, just for those new NXT women's tag belts. And Dusty so this, Cup oh, Tag Team Classic, you get the you get you, you get the trophy and then you get the belts. Yeah. Instead, they go this whole roundabout way of okay, the winners become the number one contenders for the women's tag belts. Then there's a double DQ, and then they just get awarded the belts, which I never like how whenever that happens. You, I don't like whenever someone's just awarded a belt Actually, for no I almost forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Actually, in the, uh, thanks to JC, uh, the NXT moved to Tuesdays up in the air because of a big deal with the NHL uh, in the USA Network. For those wondering, NHL just signed a seven-year deal with ESPN to air NHL stuff. So that deal is up in the air. But that's another can of worms. That's a developing story for now. Yeah, just don't keep NXT Wednesdays. That's not going to help anyone. Now, if, if Vince is in control, it, 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 that, that turns out to be true. Vince is back in control. It's staying on Wednesdays, and we're all fucked again. Uh, speaking about fucked, uh, Andrade reportedly asked for his release on Monday, but according to Dave Meltzer, it was denied. <sighs> Fuck uh... you, Junior. I'm not too sure since his Twitter it doesn't have the WWE um, preamble on it. Well, the Meltzer update came just like, uh, say like 
20 minutes before we came to air yeah this was fairly oh, okay. recent actually they 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 it, it broke that he that he said okay he he asked for his release and that's been reported but before before the show aired that it did indeed the development didn't happen wb went fuck you you're staying just a bad for andrade because like he's one of people who he may not have good english but he has raw charisma he has fantastic ability you can do something with him something yet, vince doesn't like him so fuck let me put, let me put it to you like this this is the same company that put him on several live in english speaking press junkets at a time when he could barely speak english vincent kennedy mcmahon asshole by the way hi gobble gobble uh there uh coops here coops in the chat gobble gobble of the turkeys Gobble, gobble, baby. Maybe you, you be careful, right. Coops, because we're going to sound up the gobbledygook after you. <laughs> and now I but yeah, I'll, I back to Andrade. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So it's it's oh, like so it's you sign that, and then the devil has you for for a while. I'm like, buddy, you're about to not work for the rest of your contract. It seems that way. Uh, and you would think Charlotte point. Flair would have the say, but apparently Vince said, no, fuck you, too. I have no doubt that Charlotte would at least try something to get him on TV because that's her husband. Literally, they married him not too long ago. They're just either engaged or they're married. The other way, they're very, very, very entangled with each other's lives. So just, Vince is uh, going to fix something or Charlotte's going to do something. As I said on Twitter... WWE is not the big leagues anymore. It is not a place that one should aspire to go to at this point. You go to WWE, your career and your love of wrestling can and will die. Doesn't happen to everyone, but it can happen to anyone. It's a retirement plan at this point. Pretty Look much. at AJ Styles. Worked a whole lot yeah. in, in, in the Indies, TNA, New Japan. And he's making a shitload of money now. And he's obviously the, the, the exception to the rule and he's successful. But here's the thing. Guys like Shinsuke Nakamura, guys like uh, like Andrade. Yeah, Alistair you take, still take a bump. You, uh -oh. Alistair Black, you take your bumps, and then you get paid, and then you realize, wait, I don't. I then you 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 lose your passion, and then you realize, you know what? I got a downside. I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck around for a couple of years. Let 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 my body recover and take a bump every once in a while to keep myself sharp. Or retire because you're making a shitload of money with mer with merch rights. Unless you're JTG. I mean, yeah, that goes without saying. If you're JTG, just don't pick up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and and donate and donate the proceeds of, of the money you're making with WWE to Shad Gaspar's family. Because that's what uh, a good yeah. tag team partner does. Indeed, indeed, and I once again should note that both JTG and Chad Gaspard will be appearing in the Wrestling Code coming out sometime within the next couple years. Thumb is up. Awesome. Thumb is awesome. up. Uh, let's see. Asuka is currently out with a concussion. Ouch. Hopefully she can recover soon. I probably this that close to Mania? Shane I doubt Baszler. it. Yeah, unfortunately, it seemed like that kick from Shane Baszler was just a tiny bit stiffer than everyone was expecting, thought it was. Oops. Yeah, with Shayna, it's a definite oops. She's she's not, um, despite her background, she is nowhere near uh, Nia Jax in terms of just no. This her. is this no. is just one bad kick, unfor which is unfortunate. But it, these things happen. Yeah, uh, she's not unsafe. She's she's this is her this is her first time legitimately hurting somebody in the ring, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, same here. As far as I know she is Shayna is generally a very safe person to work with, and. Now, this just takes another big star out of WWE's women's division because they lost Becky Lynch. Mm -hmm. They lost Lacey Evans for whatever she's worth. She's still big enough. Oh, like, she's pregnant and she's still big enough. And they were lining her up for something big with Charlotte. But yeah, she's out for nine months plus. Probably a full year. Yeah. You know, if she, if she prefers to take over the kid and everything. Then we have, you know, now Asuka's gone. It feels like they're just keep on losing women stars. And. At this point, if she's not going to be able to Mania, vacate the belt, make it Charlotte Flair, open challenge, winner becomes the next Rollins champion, person who enters that challenge, Rhea Ripley, she shows up, gets revenge, wins the belt. 
It's about the only way to fix it at this point. Because that's the only thing that makes logical sense. But then again, this is Vince McMahon and WWE in a corporate f setting. Logical sense rarely happens. Yeah, people say it's Rhea Ripley, but it's really Dexter Loomis in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He could probably pull off Rhea Ripley, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. I just realized he's going to be busy fucking up Austin Theory for a while. Gotta, you got you to keep him busy because otherwise Austin Theory's going to go over and I don't think the three of us want that anymore. That's the nice. other news I have. Did I go through all my news? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah, this news. Guess who's back? Back again. Yeah. Johnny is back. Fuck your plans. Yeah. Uh, Talent Relations is now run once again by John Laurinaitis. Time to find the bodybuilders in bikini models. Once again, people power has come back to the WWE, and now it guaranteed with Big Johnny back in, in back in the, back in the control, all futures will be endeavored. Wait, that came out wrong. Yeah, it did. It, or did it? Or did it? Daniel, people you're power. my son. Daniel, you're my son-in-law. Help me out here. Oh, God damn it, Dad. <laughs> yeah, just technically speaking, John Lonari says Daniel Bryan's father. Yeah, and he was almost John Cena. but yeah. <laughs> and he was almost John Cena's father as well. Almost. Oh, God. Think about that. Look at Johnny and Johnny. Daniel. At least I have my son I actually know stepfather, stepfather, but still, fuck. Stepfather-in-law. People power. Let's move on. Let's let, let this is WWE fucking each other over again. Yada yada yada. That's all the news I have. Really? Huh. Yep. Shit. Which uh which I think was still pretty meaty, all things considered. Oh, it was meaty. It was like yeah, that went faster than I thought. <laughs> I'm sadly got nothing. All right, well, well, we'll move on to the winners and losers. That we, I know we got plenty of those. Shin? Losers? Uh, do I detect a D-cell? Oh, yeah, you got one coming in. Oh, buddy. D-cell goes to Mark. That's what I'm calling him. The guy in charge of the pyro at at, at AEW just... It, it, they tested it out so much, Murphy's Law jumped in, and yeah, he... They, sh they shouldn't have gone so crazy. They shouldn't have pushed their luck with those explosives and just done it at least three times and then just save it. Just don't push your luck. But they had to push their luck, and it suffered because of it. They over They over rehearsed. Yeah. It happens. As, as for my losers, this one is going to surprise you if you hadn't heard it. Tony Khan. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. In recent, in, I from, think I know why, but I'll let you explain it. In recent sources, they have told me that a few that hours after the ending of Revolution, they, AEW put out a takedown notice to any and all videos that showed the "quote unquote" explosion from that match. And Tony Khan tried to um, did a, they, do a small. He tried to sweep it under the rug. He, he tried to save it with some lame excuses, but it didn't work. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Tony. You, you're you still new at this. You're still new at talking with the press with this kind of thing. This is a massive fuck-up on a level And it's on the internet. And the internet did what the internet always does. Keep it forever. The mistake yes. was, was deleting the memes or attempting to delete, delete the memes. Yeah, so that... So yeah, Tony, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you cut. You, you, you got. You got a lot of. You've got still got a lot to learn. So I'm gonna give you some leeway. But for this, I'm just gonna have to give you a loser. Other losers include those those damn NXT Women's Tag Team belts. I mean, you award them to a team that didn't earn them properly, and then you have them drop to another team the very same night. Does not make your titles look good if they're losing them on the same night they get them. This is not Dolph Ziggler. That doesn't work like that. <laughs> uh, and of course, my other loser being Vince McMahon for somehow letting Christian Cage 
slip through his big, meaty fingers. You cocked up, no plan, McMahon. You cocked up. That's all I got. Uh, T Dub. You know, my only losers really this week are the NXT Women's Tag Team Tells how they're being treated. Like, you could have introduced them by just having a rematch from either TakeOver, the previous TakeOver, or just making that TakeOver match for those belts instead of going this whole roundabout way to get to this part. Just either that or have the match at the next TakeOver, which is happening in just a few weeks. Build up to that. Make you have the Dusty Cup Classic season. as a perfect excuse to do that, too. Uh, that's, yeah. You could be done with the Dusty Classic match, or if you really wanted to do this one title match and have the, the double DQ, the reason why you're creating your own tag team titles, fine, do that, but then have the match at the next TakeOver because you're having two days, two days of TakeOver matches. You're telling me it couldn't fit Which this is literally too much it? TakeOver. And I never thought I'd say that about NXT TakeOvers, but am I wrong? I don't, probably not. Probably not, but yeah, there's just, it just feels like they were really rushing way too much with this. Like, settle down, take time to build to this match. Don't just, okay, here are the new, new, here are the new tag belts, here are the new champions, here are the other new champions. Woohoo! Like, slow down! For me, uh, WWE, Christian Cage is a big fuck up. I love the design of the NXT women's title, but it's this, the NXT men's title with the women's and it's a white strap, but still, it looks nice. The booking is shit, but this is WWE in 2021. Are we da all that all surprised? Uh, the other loser? Oh, he did it again, boys. He did it again. Soldier Boy. He went after the Sheik. <sighs> he went after the Iron Goddamn Sheik. Soldier Boy, it was nice meeting you. No, although it wasn't, because you're a fucking prick. And you're about to get your... your bad. You're... You're about to get your ass kicked, kicked by an old man who could stretch you farther than anyone else. Yeah, his she new single, it, his new single is, before one of his singles was Bitch, I'm Anime. Now it's, I just got bitched out by the Iron Sheik and made humble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this, a rap album with the Iron Sheik in it. Actually, no, no, hey, Bad Bunny, Iron Sheik, rap, do it. And the internet just went, ooh, you're welcome. Let's do winners. Shit. I posted um, a picture in the group chat mm. just to let you know my feelings on this. <laughs> just imagine that's MJF right now. It's uh, the picture of the of Xanatos, the Xanatos gamut. Picture reads, he's smiling because he beat your, you 30 minutes ago and you just simply, simply haven't noticed yet. Yep, MJF is a definite winner this week just for that masterful Xanatos Gambit he pulled on not just the inner circle, but the wrestling community as a whole, both wrestlers and fans. Uh, AEW for those banger matches, um, Matt Jackson versus Phoenix to start the show and to close it out would, would, have, um, would have Scorpio Sky versus Phoenix. Mm, think of beauty. Think of beauty right there. Mm -hmm. Maki the queen of the simps. She's the queen of simps. Here's her crown, your majesty. Queen of the simps. <laughs> uh, getting Christian, AEW getting Christian Cage for all of his wealth of experience and just adding to that awesome crucible that is AEW's background that's going to be fostering an entire new generation of talent. And finally, Rev Revolution. Sand is the ending. It was a great show. So long as after, so long as after, um, Moxie gets pinned by the one winged angel, you can just cut off the, the program from there. Yeah, at this point, at this point, yeah. when Paul Mox gets pinned and then you get the celebration and then and Kenny, Kenny Omega sucking up the heat, turn it off, watch the memes, have a blast. And last two winners, Shades, for joining us on this program. It was an entertaining time having you on again. And my nephew, Quentin, today is his 13th birthday. Happy birthday! Maddie, Adam, hit the button. Ah, not on the kid. He probably wouldn't get it. Nah. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yep, got him some, got him Mario, the new Super Mario Brothers 3D Land. 
and Terraria, and I got them some wall scrolls. One for um, one for My Hero Academia, and another of Jotaro Kujo. Did you get the oh, 3D Land or 3D World plus Bowser's Fury? Bowser's Fury. He wanted Bowser's that Fury. Christmas. He's gonna have fun with that. He wanted it for Christmas, but it wasn't out by then. So ah, I, I, I of course. Said, birthday comes around, I'll get it for you, man. I got it for him. You're a good uh, uncle. Everyone wants good old Uncle Greg. Yep, yep, yep. Dean up. Oh, my winners are nice and simple. AEW for being able to recover from that bot, which I did not think they would be able to do so, but they did it. They recovered and they almost made it look intentional. Almost. Almost. And you know what? <laughs> with, with the benefit of time, it will look like it was intentional. Right now, not oh, so right. much, but that's, that's, that's the benefit of time right there. I like to retroactively add a loser. And that's everyone that was calling the ending of Revolution the downfall of AEW. Oh Derby my Walker, god, I saw those two. That. Fuck you. I'm gonna add a little <laughs> loser. I'm gonna add another loser. Those people who were comparing this ending to the ending to the to the Fiend versus Seth Rollins in Hell in a Cell. Like, oh, that's not that big a fuck cool. up. At least at least the main event of Revolution had a finish. The main event of Revolution, the ending was a botch. What they did in Hell in a Cell in 2019, that was planned. Intentional, 100%. 100% to intentional to get Vince McMahon to chuckle at the marks. That's exactly what that was. This was just an honest fuck up. This is a mistake. Like, oops, this is not what they meant to happen. Hell in a Cell, they meant for that to happen, 100%. And they thought that was going to go over well. Whereas when this happened, Tony Khan knew, oh, fuck, this is bad. We need to recover. And uh, my Huge difference. Um, go ahead, sorry. Just I was just saying, huge difference, miles apart. Yeah. Anyone else, or, or is it my turn? It is indeed your turn. It's my Mr. turn. It's my turn. Uh, AEW, uh, the pay-per-view was a success, minus the botch, minus the, the, the big fuck-up ending. Whoops, what are you going to do? But they are recovering, and look, the the next few weeks and months of AEW programming is going to be way worth more than the than the fuck up. I'm in on the on dynamite again, and the fact that they did it so maybe not masterfully, but so in such a way that you 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 understand they they tried to make sense of it. You understand what they're going for, uh, Maki Ito, for all of the obvious reasons. Ethan Page. Hey, you know, slow start, but hey, he's he's in the he's in the right camp now. The thumb is up. Molly Holly for the for Hall of Fame. Mighty Molly, yes. Um, uh, Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky. That was a beautiful and uh, with that turn, the thumb is up. And of course, Maxwell Jacob Freeman and his new uh, faction. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the fuck is gonna happen. Well, maybe not so much because they're heel and I'm supposed to beat them, but uh, supposed to boo them. But still, the, 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 yes, yes, I, I am all in on that. That's gonna do it. You already heard Shades' plug, but I will do it once again with Toka Riffs Live coming up this Sunday. And as, as, as I'll get out, you know what to do there. That being said, Shin, T-Nub, plug away. Time to plug this in, as it will. Uh, yes, you can always find me on youtube.com slash MaxaCorn for all your Warmer Horde lore videos to learn more about the world of War Machine and Hordes. No video this week due to power outages, and I didn't want to rush a video, so there will be next week, Friday. But tomorrow night, I will continue my quest inside of the, the game Pathfinder Adventures. And I will be joined, of course, by the characters representing Matty J, TWK, my best friend Gabby, uh, Pugsley, and of course, Mr. Car Junkie. And hopefully, T-Dub can not be distracted by cat TikToks so he can roll properly again. I can't promise anything. Also, I might be editing my next video tomorrow. Either tomorrow or Sunday, I'll be spending time editing my next video because it is long overdue because I was waiting for uh, Retro Mania Wrestling to come out. That would come out sooner, so I'm kind of having to sort of scramble a new yeah, video you're, together. You're, to you're going with plan B now, obviously. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. there is always uh, a plan B. Oh, no, don't, don't go after Roman. I actually do go after Roman. We know what happens then. Go for it. 
Anyway. Speaking of uh, speaking of Triple H in that promo, Ooh. somebody in that promo is the subject of my next video that will be coming out soon on my YouTube channel, which I will now link in the in the Twitch chat. But of course, if you want to see the video earlier, patreoncom slash Reviews. Just costs one dollar to see it early. And like I said, if you want to see it early, Buck will do it for you. patreoncom slash Reviews. Of course, I got my tip jar. PayPal.me slash manag316. The uh, the donations are optional, but always appreciated, especially in, in this uh, particular situation. Of course, Shin's book, New Worlds, Amazon, Kindle. You should get it. It's a good book. Yeah, am I wrong, Shin? Hey, um, it's got four and a half stars average. It's a good good book. Good fucking book. And like I said, we couldn't do a two Q and A, but if we do, we always have a delay between the launch and the first question. So if you want to uh, just extra early, the Russellcast at gmail dot com. It, it's always where we go for that, and all of that good stuff. But that's gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hopefully, I sound a better guy. I think I fixed uh, the thing with the, the the video and all that stuff, or the audio, I should say. I'm sounding louder and clearer now. I know for a fact. Oh. I know, it, it, but you know what it was? I tried to fix it in in the uh, in, in the in, in the in the system, and it was just the volume shit. Turned up the gain. There you go. <laughs> oh, I was hoping to, uh, for a chance to bring up the ROH lawsuits, but I can't do anything about being crunched for time. Say la vie. Uh, the ROH lawsuits. Uh, if there is a big development, well, I think we would bring it up next week. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Keep that in mind for next week. We will discuss it for sure. And uh, that was Guts who said that, by the way. Folder. Sorry? Putting a paperclip in the mental folder. There you go. Now, uh, bring it back up next week, Guts, at the beginning of the show. We'll probably uh, we'll probably bring it up then. But on behalf of everybody, including Shin Tiger Curl. I'm Maxwell Jacob Freeman. I'm better than you. And Kei Kakudori. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and of course, TWK. Until next time, this is TWK on TWK Reviews. Tell me to work your Kakudori. <laughs> My name is Maddie J. Remind you to help professional wrestling support your Kakudori as soon as, I mean, your independent promotion as soon as possible. We'll talk to you next week, folks. Uh, I believe Fastlane coming up. Yeah, I think that's the uh, final network. Final stop for WrestleMania. There you go. Not only that, but it's the final one that's going to be broadcasted on the award-winning WWE Network. Until then, have a good one. Have a safe one. We'll talk to you then. Have a good one. Bye, everybody. Bye. Let's be honest, guys. No woman could ever replace You're Anna. Right. It's I, true. Um, huh? Who's that? Surprise, motherfucker! Oh! Oh!